A Mind Forever Voyaging is a 1985 interactive fiction game designed and implemented by Steve Moritzky and published by Infocom. It was Infocom's 17th game. A Mind Forever Voyaging was released for the Apple II, Atari ST, Commodore 128, MS-DOS, Macintosh, and of course the Amiga. So why does the Amiga version seem to be the rarest of all original versions available back in the day? In this video, we're going to answer that question and dig into it. Sit back, relax, and let's jump into A Mind Forever Voyaging for the Amiga computer. Before I get into why I feel a Mind Forever Voyaging Infocom game, specifically the Amiga release, is the rarest of all of the releases of this game, I wanted to show my complete unbox copy. And why is that important? Well, from researching, a lot of the feelies are missing from this game, whether it be the Amiga version, the Apple II version, Commodore 128, etc. But mine has everything and i wanted to document that in my video so we're going to do that next and then we will get into all the information that i found in my research on why this version is so rare so let's jump in and see what's inside the box okay let's see what is in the box grab the box and we're going to show you here is the front you can see right here in the corner, it's got the decal software for your Amiga, three and a half inch disc, IS5-C04. And that's important to catch that because you're going to see that on the floppy disk. That confirms that this is 100% the Amiga release and not like a reboxing or, you know, something like that. Here is the side of the box. And then the back of the box. And let me zoom in here. We'll hold it up to the camera. And let's go like this and kind of go up Star Wars style and show you everything on the box. Pause if you need to to read everything. And then we will go ahead and lay this back down and we will open it up when you open it up you have got this dakota our national heritage lives on in dakota book and i guess i should back up for a second let's do this here right here underneath the picture so under here it tells you what all should be in the box you get the disc the latest hard copy issue of Dakota Online Magazine, which I just showed you. A full color map of Rockville, South Dakota. A plastic pen, and that's the thing that's always missing, the feely. The pen is always missing. And a Class 1 Security Mode Access Decoder. So you see all that under the picture? Alright, so let's get back into it and show you what is in the box. So here is the magazine. And it opens up like so. Try to get that all of the shot. There's that. I'll just kind of quickly flip through the pages here. And remember, this is interactive fiction, so no graphics. It's all text-based. So you had all this stuff here to, you know, help you get immersed in the game. So yeah, here's all the pages again. Just kind of flipping through, kind of quick. Got this little ad here. Got the 80s artwork. Spring Fever. And then we get into the instructions for the game. And I'll bring this up close here so you can see it. The table of contents. And I'm not going to look through all those pages, but that's basically what this covers. And mine is in excellent condition. No writing, no stains. Here's this. Back of the magazine and then we get into 
what's in the box. All right, I'm going to adjust the camera here and zoom in on it. Up close and personal with the box. So with the box, there's this little clear little piece that kind of snaps in there. And it holds everything in place. It's a clear plastic. Sometimes this is missing from the game. And, and all of the big box Infocom games should have this. Um, usually they're not this nice. They're kind of yellowed and worn. But this one is in an excellent condition. Put that off to the side. Here is the disc. We'll zoom up real close here. And you can see Amiga. And down here in the corner, there is that IS5 C04 dash FD for floppy drive, and then one. Just one floppy drive, one disk. That's the front. You can see the label is in mint, perfect condition. Here is the back of the disk. Next up, we have the pen. And this is the thing that's always missing. Check this out. Yeah, Quad Mutual Insurance. You can read all that on there. You just hit the button on the back here, brings the tip out. Sadly, this pen no longer writes, but you can open it up like so. And here is the little insert, the pen insert. And I'm pretty sure you can go to an office supply store and get a refill. I have not done that. I'm not sure if I will, but it's cool to have the pen. Again, this thing is always missing. Look around online, eBay, you'll see. You know, IBM versions, different versions of this game for sale. Nine times out of ten, this pen is missing. My copy's got it. Next, we got the code wheel. And you need this code wheel to do things in the game. You know, it'll tell you to, like, to turn the wheel to, you know, a certain color or the number. And you just spin it around, and then it tells you, you know, how to get through the game. This is the back. See there. And like everything in this, pretty much everything in this copy that I have here is mint. I mean, it is perfect. Scale of 1 to 10, 10 being perfect, 1 being not so perfect, I would say this is a solid 9, 9.5. Then we have the instruction sheet. Bring that up close here. Interactive fiction reference card for the Commodore Amiga. So again, this isn't, you know, like a mix and match of different versions to make this complete. This is all original to this game. Then you open it up. <clears throat> Excuse me. And you got all that in there. All this over here. The back. And then we have the map of Rockville. Bring that up close. Show you that. Jewel of the Quad State Area, Cloud 9. Here's the back. Here are some coupons that are actually for use within the game. Kind of fun. And then you open this up, and then there is your full color map. Let's lower that down there so you can see that. There's the full color map. And then the text on the side of the map. And I already showed you the coupons. Look at this. We have got the registration card. Never filled out. Here it is. Infocom in Cambridge, Massachusetts. Pretty cool to have that. And then we have this. Open this. When you're ready, when you're ready, ha, <laughs> can't even read. Open this when you really need a hint. Low budget, no edits. Just doing this. Get help fast. Send for official Infocom hint books, maps right now. So there you go. This is before, you know, high speed internet. We just had bulletin boards back in the day. So you'd have to uh, fill these things out. Send in a, you know, a check or a money order. And this actually turns into a little envelope. Kind of cool. You put your, your check and stuff in there. Fold that over. And then right there you got, you know, you put 
postage where it's going your return address. Pretty nifty. And this also has the poster. And this I'm going to have to uh, zoom back out because this thing is huge. It unfolds and I want to show it to you. So give me a sec here. Let's uh, pause the camera and we'll open this up. Look at this thing. This poster is huge. I could barely get it in the shot. I have my camera zoomed all the way out. I'm using my phone to record this. So yeah, look at this poster. This thing should be framed. It's basically an Infocom poster and it shows mystery, fantasy, science fiction, tales of adventure, and then it lists out the games that meet those categories. And there's some more information down here on the bottom. So pretty cool. All right, let's get into the rest of the video. Well, that ends the unboxing what's in the box portion of my video. Now, what you've all been waiting for, why do I feel that the Amiga version of A Mind Forever Voyaging is the most rare out there? Well, I did some research, got some numbers and things to throw at you. My sources will be down in my description so you can check for yourself and see if you come up to the same conclusions. But what I found is between 1985 and 1986, approximately 28,000 copies of A Mind Forever Voyaging were ever shipped across all computer platforms. Shipped doesn't mean sold in Infocom's mind. You know, they ship things out doesn't mean they were sold. The game itself originally was release number 77, came out in August of 1985. Release 79 came out on November 22nd, 1985. In 1985, approximately 26,000 total copies were sold. The Amiga wasn't even around until July 23rd, 1985, and that was the Amiga 1000, which due to production issues wasn't really available on a wide scale until early 1986. The Amiga 500 model wasn't available until 1987. So it's pretty fair to assume that the 1985 sales numbers don't apply to the Amiga at any level. In 1986, Infocom reported approximately 1,800 total sales for a Mind Forever Voyaging across all platforms. To me, that explains why this game is so hard to find in the market, like eBay, Craigslist, Facebook Marketplace, etc. in present day, especially this Amiga version. Between 1987 and 1989, sales for a Mind Forever Voyaging totaled approximately 6,000 across all platforms. That's Apple II, Atari ST, Commodore 128, MS-DOS, Macintosh, and of course the Amiga. So in my opinion, it's pretty safe to say the Amiga version, which is the version you've been watching in this video, is the super rare version. So with that, I hope you enjoyed this video. I know it was a lot to digest. It was a longer video than I normally do. And I appreciate you watching it till the end. And I'd also like to give a thanks to my patrons. These are the folks that support me on Patreon. Patreon.com forward slash geek with social skills. We'll do this like Star Wars. A couple people have recommended to do it like Star Wars. So we're going to roll up the screen. And eventually I will be editing my videos to where this will be on the screen and not a old school piece of paper. So there you go. If you have anything to add, constructive comments, suggestions, or criticisms, leave them down in the comments below. Thank you for watching. I appreciate it. Stay safe, stay healthy, and we will see you in the next video.